What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jen, and I hope you lot are doing oh so well. And welcome to today's video, which is on Chelsea's academy and loan system and why it is actually a great success. I'm going to be talking about six Yes, six players are currently in the Chelsea squad that have benefited from going on loan and are from the Chelsea Academy and are superb players by all accounts now. So stick around, it's going to be a great, insightful video. But if you are new to the channel, I want to urge you guys to subscribe to the channel because I upload content daily and I want you to keep up with said content. So please subscribe, hit the bell notifications icon and if you want to help me out, please like the video. Right then, so what players do I want to talk about? Well, there's six players. They're integral figures in the Chelsea squad. They will all feature probably quite a lot for Frank Lampard, some more than others. Well, let's be honest, they could all easily be in the starting lineup. So, that's exciting. The players I'm going to be talking about are Ruben Loftus Cheek, the big creative tank in midfield, Fakayu Tomori, Derby's player of the year last season, a superb centre back that looks like it's his first choice on the team sheet at the moment. Mason Mount, Frank Lampard's favourite young midfielder who has benefited from a couple of loans and has got his England call up due to his immense form in the opening stages of the season and just generally looks like a world beater. Andreas Christensen, who enjoyed a loan spell away at Gladbach in Germany and was brought into the academy as a teenager and is an excellent centre back and has featured a lot for Chelsea over the last few years. Reese Flip James, the right back that will soon dethrone both Aaron Wan-Bissaka and Trent Alexander-Arnold as England's best right back. And finally, Tammy Abraham, the super striker who started his Premier League debut season with Chelsea in superb fashion. So a lot to get through. All academy players all enjoyed a loan spell that benefited them greatly and basically made them starters or certainly very strong squad players in the Chelsea first team. Right then, let's start with a big man himself, Ruben Loftus-Cheek. So Ruben's one of these lads that have been at the academy since he was very, very small. Yes, a big boy like Ruben was once very, very small. Anyway, he sort of grew up through the ranks and he was the jewel in the crown, much like Callum Hudson-Odoi is at the moment. FYI, I haven't included Callum Hudson-Odoi in this video because he didn't need to go on loan. He's like the rare exception to the rule where he's so talented he just sort of slotted right in and didn't need a loan. Anyway, I digress, back to Ruben. So Ruben was the jewel in the crown for the Chelsea Academy. He grew up really quick, really big player, very technically good and everyone expected him to be an absolute beast. He probably suffered a little bit for playing under Jose Mourinho, who sort of ditched him and probably didn't know it trimmed the right way into the first team. So Ruben got his head down, did the right thing, and he went on a loan to Crystal Palace. Ruben was one of Roy Hodgson's best players at Crystal Palace and played in a couple of different positions, including the right wing, and learned a lot about first team football. He was a very, very effective player for Crystal Palace, and they obviously wanted to keep him, but he was only doing his loan spell so he could hone his experience, his skills, get the game time and return to the Chelsea team and he did all of that. Ruben came back to Chelsea, he ended up being a massively important figure to Maurizio Sarri's Chelsea. He was a starting player in the left centre mid spot, he was a game changer when Eden Hazard wasn't doing you know, game changing things like dribbling on the ball and shooting or doing wicked combinations and basically putting it in the top corner. Ruben Loftus-Cheek was and he absolutely tore up the Europa League as well. In the Premier League last season, he got six goals from open play. The same amount as Paul Pogba, but I think he did it in about a quarter of the minutes Paul Pogba took. A really, really dangerous central midfielder, and then he got his call up to England, and he was an important player for England too. So a really successful loan spell, and now he's had a new contract at Chelsea, and he's a really important figure and he will be a first team player when he's fit again. Next up for Kyo Tomori, Derby's player of the season last season. Tomori is an absolutely immense centre back talent. He went to Derby last season like Mason Mount did, had the benefit of working under Frank Lampard and actually won the player of the season award from centre back which is really superb. Superb recovery pace, got a full season under his belt under the championship which we know is a slog. Basically fought his way back into the first team at Chelsea. It looks like his first name on the team sheet now which is 
high, high praise considering Chelsea have a few good centre-backs. He's obviously one of the lads that have been at the academy for years, that have come up through the ranks with the rest of the boys, and to be honest, if he didn't have that loan at Derby, he wouldn't be in this position now. Another great success story for Chelsea's academy and Chelsea's loan army. Which brings me comfortably on to young Mason Mount. Sure, he was at Derby last season, he scored a bunch of goals, got assists, and benefited also from playing under Frank Lampard. But more than that, for a long time, Chelsea have rated Mason Mount very, very highly. They've made him study Frank Lampard ever since he's very, very small, because he's that kind of dangerous, effective, creative midfielder. A couple of years ago, they sent him on loan to Holland, to the Eredivisie, to play for Vitesse. He scored a bunch of goals, had a really successful loan spell over there, and that speaks volumes of his character as a young teenager, 17 or 18, going to Holland and, you know, living by himself, making his own food, playing in a new country. In terms of character development and just football development, it, it worked wonders for the lad. So he completed two really big loan spells before the age of 20. Look at him now. He's in the England squad. He's been called up by Gareth Southgate. He's first name on the team sheet for Chelsea. An absolute colossal success story for Chelsea's academy and their loan system. Andreas Christensen's next up. Christensen isn't one of the lads that have been at the academy since they were a young child. He was brought in later, but he joined the academy. Chelsea sent him on loan to Borussia Mönchengladbach in the Bundesliga and he enjoyed a really successful loan spell out there. He played both in centre-back position and in midfield, and also got a wealth of experience in top-tier football, as well as playing in the Champions League. Gladbach really wanted to buy Christensen, but Chelsea were like, nah, this is a success story that we want to reap the benefits of and have him in our first team. Antonio Conte, Maurizio Sarri, and then now Frank Lampard all have played Christensen and all see him as an incredibly valuable player to the squad. Bang, bang another success story for the academy and the loan system. Next up, everyone's hot topic, young Reese James. Another one of the kids that have been at the club for a long time and has sort of gone up the ranks winning everything in youth football. He enjoyed a superb loan spell last season at Wigan in the championship. Think about this, he was an 18 year old loanee right back. Not the most glamorous figure right in the team, but he was winning consecutive player of the month, player of the month, player of the month. He won player of the season. They moved him from right back into midfield just to use his footballing ability to prevent them from getting relegated, which he did. Before he won player of the season as well, they could see this kid was absolutely saving their bacon and they gave him the captain's armband before the end of the season for a game as a mark of respect. If you just compute all of that for a moment, that is actually madness considering he's a teenage lonely right back. Yeah, he was so, so important to them. So, so effective. He's come back. He's recovered from this injury he's recently got. He played the other day in a cup game for Chelsea. He looks like an absolute worldie. He will be Chelsea starting right back before the end of the season. Chelsea have got an absolute monster on their hands. Yes, there it is. Another success story for Chelsea's academy and of course, their loan system. And finally, I wanna talk about Chelsea's number nine. Tammy Abraham. Tammy's only 21 years old, but he's actually enjoyed two successful loan spells. As a teenager, Abraham went to Bristol City down in the championship, missed out on the golden boot by a couple of goals, but broke the record for a teenager scoring in the championship. I think he got like mid 20s goals, maybe a bit more. Absolutely tore it up for that Bristol City side and was having a lovely, lovely time. Before he went to Villa, he did have a loan spell at Swansea in the Premier League, but the team was quite dysfunctional, didn't really work out for him. But that's okay because he went on yet another loan to Aston Villa, where yet again, he only just missed out on the golden boot, scored a whole hat full of goals. And even though he didn't break a record in terms of what he did for Bristol City, like loads of goals as a teenager, he was the first player for Aston Villa to score more than 25 goals for like 30 years. At this point, Abraham has a wealth of experience and over like 55 or 60 first team league goals, which is a lot more than Marcus Rashford at this point, even if he scored it at a lower level. Boom, they threw him into the first team. He's Chelsea's number nine. He scored seven goals in three games, including a hat trick away at Molyneux, which is nothing to be sniffed at. Abraham is another player that's been at Chelsea since the under eights that has worked up through the ranks, idolized the Chelsea, I don't know, golden generation, won everything at youth level, just dreams of playing for Chelsea. He's in La La Land right now. He is, yes indeed, absolutely, another success story 
for Chelsea's academy and indeed, and of course, the loan system. So, you look at this tree, it's starting to bear fruit. People used to ridicule Chelsea's loan system, saying, oh, they just loan, they just buy players, loan them out, don't do anything, make a bit of money from the loans. But if you have a look, all these players are on loan now. You know, over half Chelsea's starting 11 could be academy players that have been on loan and returned on loan and now are absolute worldies. Compare that to different clubs around Chelsea that might be spending loads and loads of money on young foreign players that might not even fit into the team and might not have any chemistry. Remember the vast majority of these Chelsea players that have played together and been on loan actually have superb chemistry with each other because they've obviously played together for years and years and years. A lot of them have honed more experience in terms of footballing culture because they've been abroad or they've been to different lower leagues like you know you look at Mason he's gone to Holland you look at Christensen that's gone to Germany you look at players that went to less glamorous clubs like Tammy when he went to Bristol City or Reese James when he was slogging it out with Wigan trying to keep him in the division they've all gained a whole wealth of different kind of experiences that they've brought back to Chelsea Football Club but also they've rendezvoused with their mates who they've played with for years and years and years so their chemistry is still there essentially the plan has worked for Chelsea Football Club and with someone like Frank Lampard at the helm, flanked by both Joe Edwards and Jody Morris, it's a perfect storm and it looks like, yes indeed, I'm going to say it, the kids are all right. Sure, the loan system is a way for Chelsea to make money, which they have done over the years. But the loan system, even if players don't come back to Chelsea, it's a way for players to gain footballing careers, find a new footballing culture, a place to live. You know, it, it does offer something to the player in isolation regardless, and people forget that. But that all put aside, it looks like it's working for Chelsea at the moment in terms of getting talented players back at the club and playing together, and hopefully in a couple of years, it could be excellent. Anyway, that's the end of the video, guys. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, please do like the video and get down in the comments and let me know your thoughts and opinions on what I've said in today's video. Remember, if you like FIFA and video games, you need to go and subscribe to my sister channel, Yan Plays, which is the feature channel on this channel, or just search Yan Plays on YouTube. And please do subscribe. And if you want to follow me on social media, you are welcome to. It's at Football Yannick on both Twitter and Instagram. And that's it guys, I'm out. So you lot enjoy the football and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chuck. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle. Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry I don't. I love me, baby.